Welcome to another video about the key figures of hypnosis and psychotherapy and I would like to uh, give you a brief presentation about a psychologist named Andre Mueller Weitznoffer. Um, Dr. Weitznoffer was a psychologist he was born in France and his, his career was um, marked by the practice and research of hypnosis, hypnotism, hypnotic phenomena. He was one of the most prolific researchers and writers in the, um, in the 20th century. So, he was indeed a very relevant figure. Uh, Dr. Weitznoffer uh, was a clinician. He utilized hypnosis in clinical practice, in psychotherapeutic practice. But also, he was a prolific researcher. Uh, in, the late, uh, in the late 60s or 50s, I think, he was invited to um, to go to Stanford University uh, by another prolific researcher called Ernest Ilgard. With Dr. Ilgard, uh, Dr. Weitznoffer constructed one of the most important um, research measures in hypnosis, in hypnotism, in uh, hypnotic phenomena, what was called the Harvard uh, suggestibility scale of hypn uh, or hypnotizability scale. Uh, well, suggestibility or hypnotizability are different concepts that, that most of the time are not well defined uh, in literature or research but they are extremely important in, and intertwined. Uh, the notion of suggestibility uh, refers to the, um, the capacity that the person has on responding to suggestions in the hypnotic state. So hypnotic suggestibility is the capacity that someone has in, uh, in responding to um, hypnotic suggestions. So in that sense the idea of suggestibility is well uh, attached to social cognitive and cognitive behavioral approaches of hypnosis. Also the idea that not everyone can be hypnotized and that there are different depths, depths of hypnosis. Um, and the research that Dr. Hilgard and Dr. Weitznoffer uh, begin, to establish, uh, begin to construct really established the um, research view of hypnosis and hypnotic suggestibility and hypnotic phenomena. Well, um, inspired by the research work of uh, Dr. Clark Hall, uh, White Snoffer and Hilgard constructed what, what is described as the gold standard of hypnotizability or suggestibility, hypnotic suggestibility scales. Uh, the Harvard scales are, are individu individual scales that are uh, administered to uh, a, uh, a research subject at a time, so it's only for one person at a time. It's composed uh, um, with a hypnotic suggestion, um, a hypnotic suggestion that inspire that um, suggests to people to focus their attention at one point, and there are also su relaxation suggestions and deepening suggestions. After the hypnotic induction, the scale is composed with 
uh, certain classes of hypnotic um, phenomena. Uh, idiomotor responses, idiosensor responses and cognitive uh, responses, cognitive phenomena. Uh, some of the examples are, f are uh, arm levitation, arm heaviness, um, magnetic attraction, um, sensation modification, um, uh, hallucinations, uh, positive and, uh, and negative hallucinations, time distortion, automatic uh, writing, um, automatic drawing, and also phenomenons for uh, regression, for age regression. Uh, the items are uh, in a specific order. They are the uh, first, they're the more easier phenomenon, the more accessible phenomenon uh, that someone can respond to. Uh, namely, idiomotor suggestions for uh, catalepsy, for arm levitation. Uh, generally, the, these are the, the most accessible suggestions for everyone. Uh, that uh, uh, The way that the scales are constructed are, uh, in fact, to motivate the subject to responses and also to establish the belief that the, uh, that the person can respond and can feel uh, certain sensations there, that they are um, well established in the hypnotic state. So really there are, uh, for, I think, 30 um, suggestions or someone, uh, someone uh, s somewhat near those those numbers and after the the, the scale um, the subject is required to to fill a questionnaire a self uh, a self uh, questionnaire that uh, that the objective is to describe if uh, the person felt uh, a certain phenomenon or if they felt they, that their that their responses were congruent to the suggestion, so the scale is not only uh, evaluated by observation, but also with self uh, self answering, self questionnaire, and those responses uh, make the the subject filled into one of three categories. The uh, the poorly suggestible person, or the or someone that uh, that can't be hypnotized, or someone that uh, can respond can respond to hypnosis, but only uh, certain uh, kind of suggestions. The um, the moderate person that is the one that really can respond to a lot of, a lot of suggestions. A lot of hypnotic suggestions, but not not uh, not entirely, not all of them, and um, the highly hypnotizable, or what Hilgard uh, named the virtuoso, is someone that can respond to all hypnotic phenomena with easy, with uh, uh, with, um, with uh, he he make. He makes uh, the responses felt like they are easy and also they can respond to almost every phenomenon including the most complex like uh, positive or negative hallucinations and age regression. So the, the Harvard scale it's composed in the A, B and C. The, the C form is the most uh, established and, uh, and utilized scale among the, um, the Stanford scales. So every scale that, uh, that was created after the Harvard scales are compared into uh, by psychometric measures if they measure to the 
to the um, statistical strength of the Harvard scale, the, the Stanford scale, pardon me, or not. Um, certain scales, like for example the a Harvard group scale or the Waterloo group scale, were composed uh, for groups uh, because the Stanford and other scales are only for uh, individuals. So uh, when we think about researching the hypnotic phenomenon and hypnotic suggestibility, we have to, we have to thank Dr. White Snuffer and also Dr. Ilgard for uh, um, creating this ground uh, ground achievement that is the first uh, hypnotic suggestibility scale or hypnotizability scale as you prefer. So not only uh, Dr. White Snuffer helped create those scales but he was a prolific writer, he wrote a lot of articles and uh, a lot of chapters but also one of the most, in my opinion, one of the most significant and complete book about hypnosis was The Practice of Hypnotism. It's a wonderful book, it's well written and it's well research based. So uh, I, would, I would suggest everyone to, to read the book if they're interested in uh, hyp hypnosis. Uh, the last thing that I want to refer to Dr. White Snuffer uh, was his relationship with Milton Erickson. At some point, White Snuffer and Erickson were great friends and uh, uh, constant collaborators. Uh, for example, Hash, the American Society of Clinical Hypnosis, uh, won, w when Dr. Erickson created Ash, one of the first editors of the Journal of Clinical Hypnosis was uh, White Snuffer. So uh, they they were great friends. However, as a accomplished researcher, um, White Snuffer didn't agree with all of the positions that Erickson took uh, relating to hypnosis and his view of hypnosis and hypnotism. Frequently, Erickson would, uh, would establish or uh, 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 a certain position without uh, clinical evidence, without research. Uh, it was a philosophy or a clinical standpoint and not an evidence-based uh, approach. So, in that sense, uh, White Snuffer began, uh, began to dis, um, distancing himself w uh, with his relationship with Erickson. Not only with Erickson, but also the Ericksonian community, as White Snuffer uh, thought that a lot of, um, well, a lot of uh, Erickson students uh, referred to certain to certain concepts of hypnosis without uh, the scientific evidence to back them up. So he criticized not only certain, uh, certain Erickson's views, but also his students. Notwithstanding one of the awards that White Snuffer received uh, during his life was the, the Milton Erickson Award from the, um, from the Milton Erickson um, Foundation. So, at least the Ericksonians recognize the relationship or the early relationship with between Erickson and White Snuffer. Doctor uh, Doctor White Snuffer died at, in two thousand and five, I believe. So he is no longer with us. However, is his work is is still a, a landmark and hypnosis and hypnotism and, uh, and hypnotic suggestibility research and when we think about suggestibility and also the um, in the field of so social psychology uh, names like for example uh, Philip uh, Phil Zimbardo, uh, Christine Malash, 
but also White Snuffer did a lot of research into suggestibility um, well, the, uh, and the ability that someone has to respond to suggestions via uh, the influence of a group or the influence of a certain context. So uh, Dr. White Snuffer is a key figure in hypnosis. Uh, everyone then that wants to uh, know hypnosis and know uh, the research based side of hypnosis will eventually heard of Dr. White Snuffer's name and as a suggestion to you I would like to to drop the, um, the practice of hypnotism and that is a, su a book suggestion by uh, by Dr. White Snuffer. So, thank you for your time. I hope you all are safe. And um, I will see you next time. And take care.